Hi, all, and thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to be looking at this, the Neos Smart Cam, um, sold in the UK, um, and it's another name. It's just a rebranded Wise Cam. Um, quite a lot of similar chipped cameras um, that were sold all over the world. The problem is, is in the UK, this camera has now been basically turned into a doorstop. So Neos uh, were bought by, I think, Sky. Um, as part of their smart home initiative and they've decided that they no longer want to continue the service and in November of this year uh, they've decided that the app has stopped working and you can't do anything with these so time to throw it in the bin right no so I actually think um, that companies shouldn't be able to do that and I'm sure if we all push towards open standards that governments and the regulatory bodies and things like that can look to force that from companies in the future but for this little thing what we can actually do is we can do a little software trickery no hardware hacking at all to put some new firmware on it just by utilizing the where is it the sd card underneath um really really uh, low barrier to get into this it's not that technical at all and when you're finished with it you're going to actually get a better product than neos started with so one of the big things that uh or the big drawbacks of the neos camera initially was the fact that it was locked into their ecosystem you couldn't pull it into your own nvr or for example you couldn't stream it to things like um vlc or them kind of apps um, you, were, you were kind of locked into using the app whereas when we put the new firmware on this little thing um, you'll be able to use RTSP you'll be able to use it as an OnVIF camera you'll be able to pull it into things like Home Assistant uh, record directly to your Syn Synology uh, MVRs things like that um, and it actually just makes this camera an even bigger steal you can pick these up now for about five quid um, they were originally sold, I think, starting at around 25 and then reduced to 20. Um, and you've been able to pick these up for dirt cheap. Now, with the fact that everyone's going to be chucking these in the bin, you can probably pick these up for, for next to nothing. And the great thing about it is that A, it's really flexible. B, it's powered by USB. And C, this bit here is a magnet. So you can clip it anywhere on metal. So you can stick up in your, you know, say in, say in the corner of your ceiling, you could stick one of them sticky uh, metallic pads and you've got a camera hanging down from the ceiling, no screws, nothing at all. So let's take a, a look at this today. And what we'll do is I'll talk you through how you can make this camera even better than it was before and defy the fact that they've turned off the service. So yeah, come with me. I'll show you how to do it. Um, it's dead straightforward, honestly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to put the SD card into mm -hmm. our Windows computer and format it at FAT32. Mm -hmm. It's important that we do it at FAT32. Quick format is fine. And the next thing we're going to do is go over to the project, which is called Thing Inno. And that's going to be the basis of what actually powers this camera. Follow the link that I put in the description down below and download the Wise to Cam v2 package you have to go into the package and then click on download raw file up in the top right corner that can confuse some people um, once that's mm -hmm. downloaded i would suggest setting a uh, directory to put all of these files in um, and then once that has downloaded what we're going to do is we're going to get this little zip file of all these different uh, files and we're going to extract them into the folder that we've just created. So we can right click and extract. Once they're all done, you should have some extra files sitting in this directory. And we're simply gonna go into that folder and then copy them across onto the SD card. So it's a dead simple. Um, all we're going to do is right click, uh, go into the folder, right click on all of the items and then copy them over. Shouldn't take too long to copy, but there is about 400 files. Now, these are going to be 
uh, the firmware um, or, or the operating system files, sorry, that will power the web interface and provide all the things like the OMBIF and the RTSP feeds. Um, then the other thing that we need to do is then copy across the firmware, which are on two separate files. Now, the reason there's two is there's two different versions of the camera and this installer will actually select the right one for your camera. So let's go back onto the thing that you know website and we're going to select the two here where it says wise cam 2 and you'll see below it it's also got near smart cam so download these two dot bin files to the same directory that we've created or you can put them directly onto the sd card completely up to you but copy them if you've not copy them straight over onto the sd card and again they shouldn't take too long and then once you've finished this process if you look you should have the same files that i've got here so four in the root directory and then an extra directory on the side we're going to cleanly unmount the uh, sd card and you should see it disappear there we're now going to insert the sd card into the camera itself now two things to note on the bottom here is you've got the reset button and you've got the sd card you will no doubt try and put the SD card in the wrong way, like I do on every single attempt. But this uh, reset button is what we're going to hold when we in, when we put in the power. So we've got to hold down the reset button and then put the power in. So that's an important step. If you just uh, put the power in, it's not going to do this. So keep that held in and it is really, really fiddly. And then try and insert the USB cable in the right way with it being mini USB, uh, micro USB, sorry, it's always going to go in the wrong way first. So try it again. You're going to need both hands for this. And you'll see once it's in, if we get it in, you'll see the orange light comes on. After about five seconds, there we go, you see it turn to blue. Once it's at that blue stage, we can leave it. And we're going to leave it for about six minutes. And you'll hear that message, which shows that the installation process or the uh, firmware updating process has started. Don't be alarmed that this is going to take a long time. Set yourself a countdown and it will take that full six and a half minutes. You'll know that it's finished once the uh, camera starts flashing blue and, blue and orange together and then goes to a, a completely off one. It may confuse you because you may think, ah, it's, it's broken um, or it, it, it stopped. But actually, once it's gone black, that means that the installation process has completed. The next step is that we're going to go on to the um, access point that the camera has created. So go into your Wi-Fi settings on your phone and you'll see that there's a new Wi-Fi network for you to join called Thing in the O um, and then a couple of numbers afterwards. Join that and if you're using an Android phone, it should take you directly to the sign in page. If you're on iOS, I believe you have to then try go to a website and it will bring this up. So you can change here the host name or and also enter in a root password and your Wi-Fi details. Once you've done that, you'll get a confirmation that the system has updated and you, the camera is going to reboot. Address is 192.168.57.85. So if you press the reset button on the bottom of the device, it will give you the IP address. And we're going to go to that in whatever your web browser is. Once we're at that page, you'll see uh, you'll, you'll be prompted for the root password, which you will have just um, created at that setup stage. And it's going to take you straight into the thing, you know, um, homepage. You'll be able to see a live preview of the camera. And along the side, you've got all of these different functions that you can check out. I'm not going to go through all of them um, because 
personally, I haven't seen all of them um, or used all of them, but you've got things along the side, such as turning on and off the IR um, to make it night mode or day mode, which you can also set up to do uh, automatically. And also there's the option to set up um, motion detection and the option to send an image to email or FTP or telegram when it actually detects motion and uh, obviously one of the ones that uh, you'll probably want to do is is video recording so recording directly to the SD card which you can also set up through this uh, settings menu with the video recording option and you can see in here there's a, a couple of options to choose we can choose the internal SD card for the storage directory. Um, we can choose the total amount of disk space to use with that before it starts to overwrite or loop recording. Um, we can choose how the, uh, the, the, the LED on the back of the camera will react and we can choose what format. Now, there's some people have mentioned that they've had issues with MP4 format, so it's been suggested to, to to use the MOV or AVI format. Once you've done that, you can click Save Changes and the system will show you that it's now actually recording. Um, and that's really it. The next bit, I guess, to show you is how you then access that, which is dead straightforward. It's through the Tools menu and you go into File Manager. And we're going to go into the uh, MNT. So anyone that's familiar with Linux will know that is the mount point. We're going to select the SD card and in there is a folder called Thingano and it will then break it down into the days. Um, as we've only just set this up, I've only got a couple of recordings in there, but we'll choose one of these. It will download it to the directory and you can just open it in VLC. And there you go, that, that's just been recorded a couple of moments ago. It is really that simple. If you've got any questions or comments about it, please don't hesitate to drop them in the um, in the comments below. Otherwise, um, go to the project website. They're really, really helpful there. Um, and all of this is, um, you know, absolute credit to those guys. They've taken these cameras and, and absolutely made the, you know, repurposed them, made them have extra life after the company has decided to just abandon them um, and essentially decided to send good cameras that were absolutely fine to use to trash which is ridiculous um but that's a rant for another day thank you for watching